Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at how to secure FME flow, previously named FME server, with HTTPS using a .cer or .crt file. These steps are also documented in the FME community and in the FME flow documentation linked in the video description. Let's start by going over a few components of the certificate. The private key is kept secret and is used with an algorithm to encrypt and decrypt data. The public key is mathematically linked to the private key. It is made public as it is sent to every client as part of the initial steps of the HTTPS connection. The certificate is a container for the public key. It includes the public key, information about the identity of its owner, and a signature by a certification authority or CA. When the server sends its public key to a client, it actually sends its certificate and other intermediary certificates in a chain of trust. This chain of trust is an ordered list of certificates, from the FME flow host to the CA or root certificate. When a client receives and validates a certificate, it compares the issuing CA with its list of trusted CAs. If a match isn't found, the client checks the next certificate in the chain to see if the certificate of that issuing CA was issued by another trusted CA. This continues until the end of the chain. The top of the chain, the root certificate, must be issued by a trusted CA. The chain of trust can be confirmed via the certificate viewer. By default, most trusted public CA certificates are shipped with the host machine's operating system. In Windows, the Trusted Root Certification Authority's Certificate Store contains the root certificates of all CAs that Windows trusts. As an example, you can check out the certificate on the FME Community Forum website. We see our root, intermediary, and server host certificate. We also see information about each of them. Now that we understand the different components of the public key infrastructure, I would like to bring up a few pointers before beginning this configuration. Once you receive the certificate from your IT department or CA, please confirm you have a file ending with the .cer or .crt extension. If your file ends with .pfx or .p12 extension, please follow the video for configuring FME server for HTTPS using a pfx or p12 certificate, which is linked in the description. If you have both types of files, the .pfx file is the simplest way to configure HTTPS on FME flow. The p12 or pfx format stores the server host certificate all other certificates in the chain of trust and the private key into a single encryptable file. They are typically used to import and export certificates and private keys. It can simply be referenced in the FME flow configuration without needing to create a new key store and import certificates. On the other hand, a .cer or .crt file usually contains a single certificate. Open the .crt file in a certificate viewer to confirm the CN value. Common name, or CN, represents the protected server's hostname. Please ensure that the hostname matches the certificate's common name exactly, unless it's a wildcard, in which case common name is represented by an asterisk symbol. We can use a wildcard certificate if you'd like to use a single cert for multiple systems under the same domain or subdomain. Web browsers will display a warning message when connecting to FME flow web URL that does not match the common name in the certificate. Make sure you have access to any and all the intermediary and root certificate files in the chain of trust as you might have to import all as applicable. Let's begin. We will be following the steps documented in the article linked in the description. The first step is to create a private public key pair in a new key store file via the command prompt. We use key tool here, 
which is a certificate management utility included with Java. It allows users to create a single store called a key store that can hold multiple certificates within it. This command includes the key algorithm and alias, key store file path credentials and format, the server DN and SAN. Distinguished name or DN contains parameters, namely fully qualified domain name of the server host as common name, organizational unit, organization, locality, state or province, and country. To add additional domain or subdomains to a certificate, please use the subject alternative name or SAN extension. We open a text editor. Copy the example script from the how-to article and replace the italicized text highlighted in red with our own values. Please contact your IT department if you have any questions about what these values should be for your installation. The store pass and key pass must be the same and have at least six characters. Please make sure that the CN value is also added as one of the SAN values. Once we have our command, we open the command prompt as an administrator and navigate to the FME flow installation Java bin folder. In this case, it would be C, program files, FME flow, utilities, JRE, bin. We run the command to create the public-private key pair. We can see this key pair as a private key entry in the new key store using the key tool list command. We will visit this command later in the video. Next, we use a key pair to generate a certificate signing request or CSR. Generated on the same server host you plan to install the certificate on, the CSR contains information like the common name, organization, country, information that the CA will use to create your certificate. It also contains the public key that will be included in your certificate and is signed with the corresponding private key. In the command prompt, Remain in the slash utilities slash GRE slash bin folder and run this command provided in the article. Specify the CSR file path with file name in the command and update the alias and SAN values to match that was set during the key and key store generation. A CSR file is created and you can open this file using a simple text editor. It would have the encrypted format as shown here. Next, you can submit the CSR generated to your IT department or CA to obtain a certificate, according to your CA's instructions. The rest of the steps can be continued once we have the certificate file in .crt or .cer format from your CA or IT department. Once we have the file, we will import the server host certificate to the Tomcat key store created in the previous steps. Check your chain of trust via the certificate viewer and if you have multiple certificates in the chain of trust, install them in the following order. Be sure to update the alias and certificate path for each. We will begin by importing the root certificate. If you don't have one, you can ignore this step. Moving on to importing the intermediary certificate. Again, if you don't have one, you can ignore this step. And finally, we import the server host certificate. You must use the same alias that was specified during the key or key store generation to import the server host certificate. Importing these certificates would create a trusted cert entry each in the key store that can be confirmed via the key tool list command. Once we have all the components of the public key infrastructure imported, we are going to import this Tomcat key store into the FME Flow's trusted certificate store, the CSRTS file. The CSRTS file is a system-wide key store with certificates of several trusted CAs. It ships with the OS. In the command prompt, 
from the utilities slash GRE slash bin folder run this command. First replacing the source store pass argument with the password from step one. You can ignore the warning the destination type needs to default to JKS. In case a distributed web application server is used, the CA search file within that Java installation must be used instead of the FME flow Java. To check your certificate was successfully imported into FME flows trusted CA certs, you can use the list command with the alias. You can see the private key entry and the trusted cert entry for each certificate imported. Next, we go to slash utilities slash tomcat slash conf in the FME flow installation folder and make backups or copies of server.xml, web.xml and context.xml. This is recommended so that you can easily revert the changes in the configuration at any point if necessary. Now we will be making changes to these XML files. These files can be used to set properties of the Tomcat modules. Run a text editor as an administrator. We recommend using an advanced text editor that will highlight the XML elements and reduce the chance of making a mistake while editing. Open the server.xml file which contains most of the FME flow configuration. Locate the SSL engine setting in the listener element containing the string shown in the article and verify the value is off. Next, locate the connector element that contains the string as mentioned in the document and replace the entire element with the XML block provided. Update the keystore file and keystore pass parameters to that of the Tomcat keystore location and the password set in step 1. If the password contains invalid XML characters, these should be replaced with escape characters. You can see an example of the edited server.xml on this linked resource on the article. Additionally, you can customize the list of ciphers. Disable TLS versions by removing version references from SSL enabled protocols or change the default port for HTTPS communication 443 to a desired custom port for both the port and the redirect port directives. Save and close the server.xml file. Next, open web.xml as an administrator and add the XML code block provided in the article to the end of the file, just before the closing web app element. Save and close the web.xml file. Next, open context.xml as an administrator and add the XML code block provided in the article to the end of the file, just before the closing context element. Save and close the context.xml file. Next, open the FME server config.txt file as an administrator, located in the server folder. Update the FME server web URL directive by changing HTTP to HTTPS and changing the port to 443 or the desired custom port set on server.xml file previously. Save and close the file. Now that the configuration is done, verify the HTTPS setup. Restart FME flow application service. If a 1067 error pops up when attempting to start the service, it is likely the configuration file contains incorrect XML syntax, including invalid characters in the password. Open a browser and navigate to HTTPS localhost or HTTPS localhost with the port number in case a custom port number was used. Also verify access via the host name or the fully qualified domain name. 
please ensure the CN link to the certificate is the same as the server host name and the FME server web URL directive. Finally, we log into Flow UI to modify service URLs to use HTTPS. To be able to submit jobs on FME Flow via HTTPS, you must enable SSL for a service. Open the Services section under Admin, System Configuration, Network and Email. Click Change All Host and in the URL Pattern field, change HTTP to HTTPS. FME may have already picked up this change, in which case select OK. If required, also modify the port number to 443 or the custom port number set previously. To test services, run a sample workspace with data download or job submitter service to confirm your installation is working with HTTPS. Your FME flow is now configured to work via HTTPS. If you are using single sign-on for web UI login, update the SSO authentication URL to use HTTPS. Run a text editor as an administrator and open the properties files.properties located under the folder path utilities, tomcat, web apps, FME server, web inf, conf in the server installation folder. Locate the single sign-on auth URL parameter and update the hostname and port portion of the URL to match the hostname through which the web UI is accessed. Please see our community article for additional steps in case you use the WebSocket server or want to use the legacy topic monitoring. These steps are also documented in the FME community and in the FME flow documentation linked in the video description. If you encounter other issues, please see our HTTPS troubleshooting guide in the FME community forum. Thanks for watching.